Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology, and I will be de demonstrating Poisson's ratio. And uh, the problem that I'll use to demonstrate Poisson's ratio is stated right here. Determine the load that, that is necessary to close the gap between the steel cylinder and the granite wall. So we have a steel cylinder here, granite wall, and there's a gap in between there that we want to apply a load on the steel cylinder and cause it to expand in the transverse direction to close that gap of 0 0.0065. Okay? Now, there's some other information that's given. The first thing is the type of material that this uh, cylinder is made of. It's steel. The diameter of the cylinder, which is 250 millimeters. Mu, which is really Poisson's ratio. It is a relationship between the transverse divided by the actual strain and we have a modulus of elasticity which is 220,000 MPa. Now let's go and look at some of the formulas. Poisson's ratio is stated right here. It is a ratio between the transverse strain and the actual strain. It's millimeter by millimeter so it's a unit less number. Another formula that's uh, fairly important to understand is uh, the strain formula. Strain formula is also millimeter over millimeter, but it's customary to write this uh, unit here. You don't leave it out. Poisson's ratio, you could leave out the units. Uh, it's customary to, to write it, but it's understood that it is a unitless number. The reason why you want to write it is because you have the total deformation of the sample under load here. Divided by the, the, the length, the total length of the sample. Uh, so when we divide the total deformation by the total length we're getting deformation per millimeter of the sample okay so really strain is deformation per millimeter that's what you're calculating let's uh, let's go and examine what uh, the, the small the, the capital T and the capital A transverse and actual really means when we look at a sample and this sample is not loaded it's it's a cylinder it's uh, representative of uh, our problem but when we load it it deforms we place a load on it and it deforms the length of it becomes shorter but the diameter becomes larger or fatter or wider and that the direction that you apply the load is called the actual direction perpendicular to that is the transverse direction so in this case with a cylinder, the transverse direction will be the diameter of the sample. Okay, the diameter is the transverse uh, length. The actual length is this length right here, or the original length. Okay, when you subtract the the diameter from the diameter, you'll get your your deformation. Okay, let's go to and look at some other formulas that we'll need to use and this one in particular we'll need to use it is the stress formula stress in MPA is equal to load in newtons divided by uh, cross-sectional area of the sample in millimeters squared now if you look at these uh, units there's no way that you could uh, cross out these units and get MPA so you have to know this it's an identity that you have to know Newton divided by millimeter squared will give you MPA. Let's go and look at another formula. We have already looked at this one. It's the actual strain. You take the total deformation in the actual direction and divide it by the total length and you will have deformation per millimeter of length. Okay, And that is a fairly small number. We do write it with its units, but if you write it without the units, it's, it's correct also. And we're going to look at Hoke's law, the modulus of elasticity. Well, the modulus of elasticity, represented by E in MPA, is really a slope. It's the slope of a stress-strain curve, the proportional part of a stress-strain curve. You have uh, the stress in the y direction, which is the rise, divided by the strain, which is the run, and that's how you get... Uh, MPA. These units cancel out here and you're left with MPA. And you get this from a stress strain curve, the proportional part of it. It is the slope of that. The next formula that we should look at is deformation of a sample. 
deformation is equal to the load times the actual length divided by the cross-sectional area multiplied by uh, the modulus of elasticity. So that will give you the deformation. Okay, and that will be in millimeters. When you look at this, Newton divided by millimeter squared, that's MP, that will cancel out with this and you're left with uh, millimeters. Also, when you look at this part of this formula, it is the same as stress formula over here. So when you, you could use uh, for deformation again, stress times length divided by E, which is the modulus elasticity. These formulas are the same. The one that we're going to concentrate on is the one that change your direction. This is the only formula that you have that will take you from transverse to actual direction. Okay, Once you know your Poisson's ratio. For steel it's 0 0.25. Different material will have different Poisson's ratio. Okay, So this is the only one. Seeing that we know this, if we know one of these other quantities, more than likely uh, the transverse, we could come up with the actual uh, strain. Okay, so we have three quantities. If we know two, we could solve for the other one. This allows you to change direction like I've mentioned. Let's go to the, the problem and review the problem again. We want to find out the load that we should apply on the steel cylinder that will close the gap in here. Now that gap is actually in the transverse direction. The the load is being applied in the actual direction and you want to know what it, um, what load will cause a transverse deformation here. Okay. The other thing that I should explain to you, when you have a cylinder and you apply a load, it doesn't only deform on one side. It will deform the same on the other side too. So if we want to get the transverse deformation, we have to take 0.00 six five and multiply it by two to get the 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 transverse deformation okay let's go and solve this problem like i mentioned we have to take uh to get the transverse deformation we're going to take the gap multiply it by two which gives us uh, 0 0.130 millimeters now we could go from uh seeing that we have we, we want to use Poisson's ratio to change direction to actually work out our load Okay, the load is in the actual direction. We are working in the transverse direction right now. We have the total transverse deformation. We could go to transverse strain fairly easily. If I were to take um, the deformation and uh, multi uh, divide it by the transverse length of that sample, then I will get strain. Okay, and that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the strain formula here. Right, we have transverse deformation divided by transverse length, which is the diameter of the sample, and that will give us a uh, transverse strain. We've gone from deformation to strain. The next step that we're going to do, we already now know this quantity and this quantity. We could switch direction by getting a quantity in the actual direction by using Poisson's ratio, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to rearrange the formula. I'm going to rearrange Poisson's ratio so I saw, solve for the actual strain, and that's what's happened here. We have taken the transverse strain divided by Poisson's ratio and got actual strain. Okay? So we are moving towards uh, getting the stress for this. Let's go to our modulus elasticity formula, which is the slope of a stress strain uh, curve. We have the stress, the strain. We've been given this quantity and we just calculated this quantity. So if we rearrange, so we solve for the stress right in here, and we could plug the numbers in and come up with a stress for that sample in the actual direction because we are going to actually use the um, the strain in the actual direction that we calculated right here right so we are looking at uh, actual strain modulus elasticity this was given and when we work that out it should come out to 
45.8 MPa, which is a stress. Now, the only formula that we have, well, it's not the only formula, but the formula that has stress and uh, load in it, the simplest one, I should say, is stress is equal to load over cross-sectional area. We know the area. We don't know the load. That's what we're trying to find. We now know the stress in the actual direction. We're going to rearrange and solve for load. Load is equal to stress times cross-sectional area. And that's what I've done here. I've calculated the stress right here. Cross-sectional area of that sample, I've used pi 3.14 times at the diameter squared divided by 4. This is the same as pi r squared. Same as pi r squared. And I came out with 2,247,063 newtons. I'm not going to leave that number in there. I'm going to divide it by 1,000. So that would take my decimal place over to here. And I have 2,247 kilonewton. And that is what will be applied to this sample. It will close that gap. And it will just close the gap. I hope that this, uh, this particular problem helps you with your studies. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a sort of difficult problem. I know that uh, when it's presented like this, it uh, seems to simplify it a little bit. Good luck. Bye-bye.